Hi, my name is Terry and welcome to the Stussman channel. And as always, my wife Soraya, she's going to be doing the filming. Hello. Today, we're back with the Ford Escape and this time we have a steel line that is leaking on the clutch side and also we're going to replace that and also we're going to replace the rubber hydraulic line that's also in there. Okay, let's get started. This here is going to be 10 millimeter nuts here, a socket to fit it. We'll be taking this off. We're going to be taking these here two clamps off. Start off with your uh, negative side here, eight millimeter on that. And so we're going to be taking that out of the way. Tuck them out of the side. Then over here, same thing, eight millimeter. We're going to tuck him out of the way. Once we get this out of the way, then I'll try to give you a shot of the line. This really tucked up under here, the steel line. Starts up here with a clutch master cylinder. It's up in here, way down in there. The reservoir for that is actually coming off from the uh, the brake master cylinder reservoir here. So you can see this here rubber line. So it's going down to the clutch master cylinder. Here's part of that line right here. This line is really rusted out. Rusted out down here, way down here on the bottom of the uh, inner uh, fender well on the driver's side. All right, after we get the two nuts off on the battery strap, then we just lift her straight up. Then just lift the battery straight out. Now, the battery tray, we're gonna remove that, and that's gonna have four bolts, eight millimeter socket. We'll take care of that, one in each corner. And I'll catch you guys in the next shot after we get the bolts out. Once you get the full bolts out of the uh, battery tray, then this here harness, you're going to see there's this here plastic fastener right here. And that's going to be going down this hole, so just pop it right on up. Now, once you do that, then this here tray should lift right on out of here. And there she be. Alright, now that we got the battery tray out of the way, you can see at least part of this here steel uh, tubing that's for the clutch. Here's this here steel tubing. This thing is pretty much rusted out comes up goes in a bracket then right up in here on this side you can see there's a there's the rubber hose here that is connected to the end of the steel line comes on around here so we're going to replace this also now this line right here this is going down and this is going to the clutch slave cylinder which is right right here okay so probably a little hard to see but anyway Going back to the line over here, once you see this line, you can follow it on out. It's going on down here. It's going to be hard to see it from here on out, but it's coming back. And this line is coming up right here. And now it's coming up. And it's got this little bend down in there. Now you see it's coming up here to this here clutch uh, master cylinder, which is right there. Little brass part down is a check valve down there. I have a vice grip pliers that's on this here rubber hose, and I have two pieces of vinyl tubing that's on the jaws of the vice grip pliers to protect this rubber hose from being damaged. That'll keep the brake fluid from coming out when we disconnect the line. All right, I'm working on this here line that's going down to the slave cylinder. So I've got to lose 10 millimeter flare or a line wrench will take care of that. And then I'm working on this clip right here, and this clip just slides right down. And the lip is back here to my right. In other words, in this direction. So basically, get a little screwdriver or something in there, try to pry this thing up. Picture of that clip, okay? Mm -hmm. Looks pretty typical of the brake lines, you know, the flexible hoses. So it goes in there just like that, as I mentioned. This little lip pointed back that way. Now I had to take a hammer and tap this thing out because it was so rusted in there. So, so there it is. Okay. As you can see, this here, this here line, this fitting here is rusted to hell. And even crawled is not helping me out. So I had a wrench back here on the back for the rubber flexible hose to keep it from twisting so I wouldn't have to bend this bracket. So I had a 15 16 wrench back here, 5 8 inch line wrench up here, turned it, and then the next thing happens is the line starts twisting. Alright, so the new game plan. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this here harness off. 
okay? So basically, I'm going to take this whole bracket off, and I'm going to slide this whole line out with the bracket. Then I can get to this thing a little bit easier. So i got to remove this here wires, this harness. In fact, let's just take this harness loose. Let's get him on out of the way, so I'm going to just slide him off of the bracket there. Now I'm going to get a wrench uh, socket. Looks like an 8 millimeter. I'm going to take it loose. And it looks like there is 8 millimeter bolts for the bracket. One is here. And there's two more. Yeah, it looks like two more down there. As a correction on this, there was one more bolt right here. It turns out this bracket and this is all one piece. So it's a total of four bolts. And again, we have this harness over here. So I'm just going to slide him off. So now he's free. Alright guys, it's probably hard to see, but right here up at the uh, master cylinder for the clutch, I'm just loosening up this line for that. And what I did is I held this one up here on the very top with a 19 millimeter, and then this one down on the bottom, I used a 5 8 line wrench to break it loose. So now, oh, nice. yeah, he's loose now. Now if we can just weasel this thing out of there. Alright, next game plan can't get this thing out so what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to drop this here shield up underneath on the driver's side and I'm going to try to angle this thing and come out so that part of it now let's see how it comes out oh yeah oh, nice all right so if you want to take that line out you're going to have to take it out through here because I tried to take it out through the engine compartment and there wasn't no way in hell and don't ever believe there's anything called a Five minute job basically taking off this fitting and this fitting anyway I didn't want to damage this anymore because you know we need these bins and so this thing started rearing up on me a little bit so I do not want to sit here and pretty much damage this thing so anyway let's get this here line made if you want to buy this line mm -hmm. from, from the Ford dealership mm -hmm. no can do this part has been discontinued can what you cannot find it and I have looked everywhere online had a local dealership they looked online all across the US there is nothing so we'll have to make it all right once this thing was out and in the open and then now you're now it's really easy to hold everything in place so I was able to get this thing freed up uh, you can see how rusty this thing is this here line is leaking like hell so anyway so now we got it loose so now we're good to go. One last thing that you may have noticed is that when I took the four bolts out for the bracket, it wasn't really necessary. I found out later once I got the bolts out and flipped the bracket up, that actually here's another bracket, you know, securing the this here hose. So basically one 10 millimeter uh, nut here is a socket to fit that. And then that will separate from the other bracket. And then I just brought the whole thing down, as you saw earlier coming out from underneath the car. So we're back. And now, here's the old line. Out with the old, in with the new. Mm. All right, on this line here, as I mentioned, you can't get this here uh, line from a dealership that's been discontinued. Right down the road from me, there is a place that makes hydraulic lines, steel lines. So I just went down there and I had these guys to make it. 26 bucks later, got another line. Nice. Now, while this is off, the brackets, you know, were rusty. So I sandblasted them. I painted them. So got all that. <clears throat> all of the fasteners here, I've been soaking them in Kroll. So they're all good to go, ready. Here's our old flexible hose. He's out and in with the new. Ooh. So let's get it in the car. Now before I start fishing this line back up in there, I went ahead and put some painter's tape on each end to keep some uh, getting debris in there while I'm getting it routed up in there. All right, so now let's go to the car. Now what we're to try to do is we're just going to reroute this here line. Mm -hmm. This here end here is going back up to the uh, master cylinder over there for the for the clutch. So I'm just going to go back up underneath the car. Just going to reroute it. Now this might be hard for you guys to see. At least you can see how it's coming. Oh, coming back into it. Now, now yeah, let's see. Good 
jigsaw puzzle. I'll tell you. Yeah, because it wants to hang up down here. It's a jigsaw puzzle. Mm -hmm. I was never one for damn at jigsaw puzzles. That's that. the truth. Even when they had the picture. Hey, with these bins in here. Oh yeah. It does make it a little more complicated. Try to get this thing fed up in there. Because I gotta get this thing flipped around. Then it's got to go up behind these two lines. Yeah, that being sure we're putting it in the way. And I ain't wants to hang up on the cover down there. Do you guys really want to see all that? Okay, so he's up in there now. All right. And you can see now he's up there angled to where the, you know, to the check valve. All right. Yeah. Now, there's a clip. There's a clip right here, plastic clip that the line will snap into. I don't think I want to, I don't think I want to put them in there right yet. Ahead. I'll snap them on in there. He's easy enough to take out if I have to take them back out. All right. Now this bracket will swing around like so. And the input goes just like that. So I think I'm going to get some bolts started in there. So let me go ahead and let's get the bolts and we'll get them in. All right, so I got the four bolts and I'm just putting a little bit of anti-seize on the threads since we had a little corrosion before. Okay. All right, I got the uh, four bolts in here for the bracket. You see there's one there, one there, and then the other two, they're right down in here. Okay, now I got this bracket, and I got a little bit of anti seize on the threads, and that is going to go like in there. So I'm gonna put a nut right on that, on the threads right there. Let me get my hand down in there. So it's 10 millimeter socket I got on there. So I'm gonna just snug it up. Now I have the other ones, the other full bolts. I, right now I got them loose. We'll come back to them later. Now I have the flexible rubber hose. Now on this smaller end, I just put some painter's tape to keep debris from getting in there. So let's take the larger end, coming in from the behind on this bracket. And there's a little recess area in this bracket, so when you put it in, you'll find a spot where it won't turn. And we'll take our clip, large clip. Let's see if we can push it on there. Oh, okay, nice. so there it is. He's secured, okay. All right, right down here, I went ahead and got the line in. And I turned to find out that uh, I had to take the line back out. I had to rebend it, shape it, you know, the guy to bend it, it was a little bit off. You know, 20 minutes, put in the in and out. I had to do it a couple of times. So anyway, you know, to get these fittings lined up. So we got this one secure up here. We got the other one up here on the, uh, secured on the master cylinder. And also we got a clip down here where the line is, you know, snapped back into this here plastic clip. Maybe hard to see, but there it is. Can't see it at all. <laughs> okay, trust me, there's a plastic clip there that this here line will snap into. All right. I guess right now, let's go ahead and put these here harnesses. Can snap them back on. And let's get him. Okay. Next step is we're gonna be doing this line here. And we're gonna be putting it back in here. Then we're gonna connect up this here. Steel line is going down to the slave cylinder. And then that's what we'll be doing next. So I've got, the, uh, got this here hose in. I have my little clip, and let's put him on. And slide him down on there. 
Sophia, go on. Back. Sound effects too, huh? Yeah. Yeah, let me get a little something tap it down on there. Now I'm just going to use the handle of a hammer. Yeah, that's a little something. Yes, yeah, a little. <laughs> okay. All right, he looks like he's down there. All right, so now we have that line. That's how I screwed in. 3 8 inch wrench. I used it to snug it up. All right, now I'm going to take the vice grips off on that rubber hose down here. I just hope like hell this thing ain't going to leak. Let's make it a little round now. As we hear gushing. <laughs> well, I guess we're going to find out when we start to bleed it. Okay. Okay. Now, it's going to be a tough shot uh, to show you where to bleed this at. It's on the slave cylinder. Look for where your line is at. And you see i got an Allen wrench in there now. That's a four millimeter Allen wrench. It's right to the left of where this here fitting goes in. Now I'm going to go up underneath the car. You'll get a better shot so you can see more of what we're looking at from up here. So we're looking up underneath the car. We're looking at the slave cylinder. You see the steel line that's coming into the slave cylinder and to the left from looking up above. You can see there's a four millimeter Allen wrench. And so basically it looks like an Allen wrench, uh, a set screw. Now the idea is that I'm going to have Soraya. She's going to be inside the car. She's going to push the clutch pedal down. She's going to hold it. I'm going to loosen up this screw. That'll allow the air to come out. Then I'm going to close it. And then I'm going to have her to release the clutch pedal. Then I'm going to have her to push it down again. And then I'm going to loosen up the screw until we don't get any air out. It's going to be hard to show this filming, so that's why I'm telling you about it now. All right. Wish me no luck. So wish me. <laughs> wish you lots of luck. Yeah, wish me luck on having no leaks on this stuff. All right. Talk to you later. All right, guys. Now, what the service manual said is just like I mentioned to you earlier. You'll push the, brake, uh, the clutch pedal down, hold it, and then you'll crack that uh, set screw, and then you'll hear air coming out. Now, I did that a few times, but it seemed like it was taking forever. So here's what I did, and it sped up the process. With the set screw screwed in, I had Soraya to pump the brakes up. I mean the clutch. <clears throat> Sorry. She pumped the clutch up, and then she pushed it to the floor, and then I cracked it, and a lot of air came out at that point. So then I closed the set screw, had her pump it up a few times, and then while she was uh, uh, pushed it down all the way to the floor, I cracked it again, more air came out. That probably took about a dozen times for this here to come out, you know, all this air, until finally the fluid actually came out and there was no air. So anyway, go ahead and surround, just give it another shot. So it's uh, looking pretty good. And I've checked around for leaks. I didn't see any. Okay, so there's that master cylinder. Do you see where it's fitting in? Is um, I've looked over that really good while she's been pumping it quite a few times, and I do not see any leaks there. We'll check the other fittings here. All right, so Red, go ahead and pump it up. Don't see anything on that fitting. That looks good. And we're looking down at this other fitting down there. And he looks good. And of course on the clutch master cylinder. I don't know where I'm at. And there he is down there. And he, there you go. Let's get some light down there. And he looks good, okay? All right, we got our battery tray. He's uh -huh. all cleaned up. Now if you remember this here corner, this is where the plastic fastener for the electrical harness went down in so uh -huh. he's going to go in just like that if you notice there's a little peg you know and you see the peg and you see the hole oh one and one make uh, two yeah let's put the hole a peg in the hole oh it's an easy jigsaw puzzle now we're going to take and we're going to snap our plastic fastener for the electrical harness down in there and now you can see our holes are all lining up nice. so now let me go get the bolts for that and as always, being in a corrosive environment where this here battery tray is directly underneath the battery, you're going to put a little bit of anti-seize on the threads. This way, maybe the next time this thing's got to come out, it will be a lot easier coming out of there. Okay, an 8 millimeter socket will take care of those bolts. So let's go ahead and we'll ring them on down.
Okay. All four of them are secure. Now let's set our battery back in place. And now let's get our cables hooked back up. Give me some power. Okay. Now let's put our battery strap back in place. Okay. A little bit of anti-seize. Okay. Now we're going to get a 10 millimeter deep well socket and let's snug the battery strap down. Nice and secure. I believe that'll do her. Yes. Okay. All right, that's gonna wrap up this video, guys, and uh, be sure that when you're doing your bleeding process, I didn't mention it, but make sure common sense tell you to, you know, to refill your master cylinder and get some brake fluid back in there, you know, as you're bleeding out this uh, slave cylinder. Okay, pretty cut and dry job here. Not too bad. Wasn't too painful. Does that mean I can drive it when I leave in 30 minutes? Yep, you should be good to go. All right, perfect. And there's only one other issue that's on this car. It's got an idle air control uh, valve that's on here. <clears throat> so the idle, if you come to a stop like, you know, a stop sign, you know, the idle will go up and then it will go down. Mm -hmm. Up and then down. So uh, maybe next video we can uh, take a look at that and see what we can come up with. Perfect. All right. Thanks, guys, uh, for watching, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. You take care.